Hello everybody and welcome to Tuesday's edition of the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. Now oh, this, it's just a little bit of product placement. After Coda's comments yesterday I thought, you know, may as well rub your faces in it. May as well let you know, Element Rival Watch, best watch on the market. Alright, Weetabix, Crispy Minis, my favourite cereal, my favourite Gooch Cream, Velo Skin. Everybody knows it. Science in Sport is my favourite nutritional company. And of course, my favourite shoes are Bonds. If I want coffee, I'll head to Grand Tour Coffee. If I want CBD oil, just to relax myself a little bit, Pure Sport CBD. Suck it, Coda. How's about that for product placement? Let's get on with news. First up in the news, let's talk racing news. And this was actually brought to my attention this morning by Ben Swift when I spoke to him. He suffered a very similar crash to this after he hit a rock on a descent in Tenerife. He told me a little bit more about the, the incident. Turns out his, uh, he ripped his shorts and his, his knob fell out. <laughs> but anyway, he really, he really suffered some serious injuries. We shouldn't laugh. We shouldn't laugh because he was in intensive care. But anyway, it's not about Swifty. He was just telling me the story about it today. But Mike Turnerson for Jumbo Visma suffered a very similar incident as he hit a rock on a descent over in Tenerife while on an altitude camp. And he suffered injuries that are going to put him out for the start of the season. So over on the Jumbo Visma website, they say Turnerson hit a rock on Saturday in a descent and crashed. On Tenerife, he received first aid in a hospital, after which the unfortunate rider flew to the Netherlands yesterday. In AMC Hospital in Amsterdam, additional examinations show that further treatment is necessary. This means that Turnerson's entire spring campaign is in jeopardy. Turnerson, speaking on the matter, said, First you hope it's not too bad, but this is terrible. You want to start the season well, especially if the previous one was ruined, as in my case, by an injury. But anyway, apparently I have to drain the poison cup completely. What? I think that's lost in translation, surely, because that sounds rude. <laughs> anyway, instead of taking one step forward with an altitude training camp, I'm now taking two steps back. I'm going to do everything I can to be back on the bike as soon as possible. And another rider who suffered a setback, Peter Sagan, is likely to miss the first weekend of the classic season at the end of February. After testing positive for COVID-19, he spent 10 days quarantining on Gran Canaria and he's likely to get back to training soon but unfortunately because of that he is likely to miss Strada Bianchi on March the 6th as well and then it looks like he's going to pick his season back up at Terreno Adriatico and going to be riding Milan San Remo. Next up sticking with racing kind of a little bit the stalwart of the Grand Tours for the majority of the the, the past decade Adam Hansen has just revealed that he is designing his own bike. Now Adam Hansen has been designing his own carbon shoes for years but now he's going to be designing a time trial bike to compete in an Ironman with. And um, this is what it looks like. Is that not the most disgusting bike you have ever seen? I mean, I understand why he's doing it and why he's building it, but come on. It's definitely built for substance over style, that thing. But over on Cycling News, they say the Australian's home-built design is 28 millimeters wide, features custom-made derailers and a floating chain ring. Do it. Adam Hansen finally hung up his cycling shoes at the end of 2020 season and has decided to focus on triathlon and Ironman events in 2021. He told Cycling News, I'm going to do everything in-house for me. If I just design it and give it to another manufacturer to produce, then I would never really say I made the bike. I really want to do it all by myself. I'm trying to make it as narrow as possible. The widest part of the bike, excluding the forks, will be as wide as the front tyre, 28 millimetres. Now, one pretty impressive thing that he did mention was that floating chain ring. He said, I want to have a straight chain line at all times. To achieve that, I'm going to try to have a front chain ring that's floating. So as you shift to the bigger sprockets at the back, the front chain ring will follow the chain line as well. That's pretty, uh, it's pretty impressive, that, Hanson. Good thinking. But clearly, this is one for the triathletes and the, uh, the time trialists out there. What do you think to this bike? What do you think to him trying to attempt to make it himself? He's going to be making his front derailleur, his rear derailleur. He's going to make all the components himself as much as he can. That is just insane. And to think, 28 mil wide. It's about that wide, the bike. All right. It's note. As ever, leave your comments down below on all those stories. And let's move on to some real racing now. Some esports racing. There she all right, real race news time now. Season two, race six of the Zwift Racing League took place last night for both the men and the women. The men's race. 
Things are starting to get a little bit hot in there, getting a little bit spicy. There's a little bit of trash talking going off between the teams. And it all started last night in the pen as the riders began to start. So over on Freddy Ovet's stream, link down in the description if you want to go and subscribe to him and watch some real quality racing. Race Tech said that, Liam, we are seeing you on a disc wheel. Can you make sure you swap that out for a regulation wheel set? To which um, Liam Bard replied, I was originally noticed, left, changed outside and returned with different wheel set. So this is a bug that happens in Zwift quite a lot. Uh, I know it happened to me, I think, um, in the Zwift, Tour de Zwift. Sometimes if you enter the pen and you change your bike in the pen, it doesn't always change it for everybody else to see, but you're on the, the new bike. And it's happened a couple of times when we've seen mountain bikers smashing it up hills thinking they're on a mountain bike when they're actually on a on a decent climbing bike but it just looks like they're on a mountain bike because of the the, the glitch anyway he was on the regulation set of wheels you're not allowed to use disc wheels in this premier league so he'd come out swapped his wheels around gone back in but obviously other people were seeing it as as a disc wheel the race tech then noticed that alec cowan from the legion team was also riding a disc wheel so they said you are seen as riding a disc wheel. Will you please swap it out for a regulation wheel set and rejoin the pen? Cowan replied, sorry, all fixed now. Race Tech said, great, thank you. Then Ollie Jones piped up with, don't you have to be level 35 in game to have disc? Clearly having a pop at Cowan for only being level 23 on Zwift. And technically, yes, you do have to be level 35 to be able to unlock that disc in the first place. However, Legion are actually sponsored by Zwift and Zwift essentially unlock these wheels for them as part of that sponsorship deal. I don't think that's a... That's a crime against humanity in any way, shape or form. Anyway, you're not allowed to use those discs. Had they used those discs in this race, there would have been a, um, a repercussion because of that, because they weren't allowed to. Anyway, my point being that Freddy Ovet did not take too kindly to this. Anyway, the race got underway and it was a clean sweep by Freddy Ovet. He dominated that race, taking the points, taking the sprint finish, and he wasn't too happy at the end of the race. Yes. Some silly, unnecessary comments from uh, the other riders. Jealousy, I think, and uh, yeah, don't piss me off, because you're just gonna get beat even harder. Clearly, a little bit of beef developing between Legion and Canyon ZCC. We'll see how that one develops here on the new show, because you know Pritch loves a bit of drama. But talking of Canyon ZCC, and a story that came out a couple of weeks ago now, was one of their riders, Philip Deigner, actually got disqualified from one of the events and he's been kicked off the Canyon ZCC team. Now, in a statement issued by Deigner yesterday, he said, I'd like to make a statement here regarding a message regarding my e-racing career that's currently on social media. I've been carrying this around for a few weeks now and I'd like to comment on it finally. This is about me being suspended by the Canyon Esports team. It's important to me to realise, and don't forget, this is um, this is translated, so forgive the, the bad the bad grammar. I didn't dope or somehow gain advantage, but that it's the issue with some of my dual recordings. We also need to record and file data from our power meters at Zwift as a comparison and validation to the coach who is mandatory as a primary source in Levenenen. There I processed the data retrospectively before sending some files. Also fixed signal errors because I was not satisfied with the file and therefore broke a rule of the e-cycling rulebook. That was stupid and naive and a mistake that made myself and especially my team look very bad. And then he goes on to say, I would like to apologize for the damage and loss of confidence to all parts, first and foremost to my teammates and other e-racers and hope you can forgive me over time. So this statement comes just over a week after Canyon ZCC put out on their website a press release. And in there, Reese Howell, the team manager, is quoted as saying, we are an incredibly close-knit team, so losing a rider is like losing a limb. Personally, I can only describe my feelings as heartbroken. However, I did not hesitate for one second to make the necessary decision to terminate our agreement with the rider in question. Our team is more than any single rider alone, and we firmly believe in transparency and a clean sport. There can be no deviations from that belief. Our sport relies on trust, and a team like ours is founded upon it. We will now look at how we can avoid such situations in the future, and I have reiterated to all our senior and development riders that they can and should always come to me first if they are struggling. I hope this episode will be but a lone footnote in the exciting story of our team. So another rider who tried to manipulate their power data now, according to... Dagner, he tried to manipulate it to, I guess, for want of a better word, tidy it up to get rid of a few of those power dropouts. But, good man, good man. 
fucking man. Someone who's at the forefront of esports racing, someone who rides for one of the, the most well-established, if not the most established team within esports, should know better to, to not touch it. Regardless of whether you're trying to tidy it up or what, just don't touch it. Just leave it be because you know we've seen it in the past with other people who have tried to um, manipulate or edit their files. Zwift find out about it and they'll just they'll just come down on you. So if you're trying to tidy it up for any for whatever reason, you can't think that that's going to be a good thing. So clearly there's probably a little more to it than that. And if if his power meter was mis calibrated or it was reading higher and then he's noticed that and he's gone oh shit i didn't realize that i just come out and say it don't try and manipulate it so it all matches and then try and get away with it because that that the, the thing is that doesn't help the sport and canyon zcc are trying to establish esports as a a worthy a worthy discipline within cycling the likes of Legion doing exactly the same. No pins doing exactly the same. The collective, the Wahoo collective, us, we're trying to do the same to some degree, but you need everybody on the same page. And if there's people right at the top there manipulating data and changing data, then it's it's not it's not a good look. It's not a good look. So it is what it is, and lessons have been learned, hopefully, for him. And he's not gonna take it too hard. And people aren't gonna jump on his back because at the end of the day, he wasn't tearing away winning races left, right and centre. So, give the man the benefit of the doubt. Made a mistake. Don't do it again. And if everyone else learns from that mistake, then it's only going to be a good thing for the sport in the future. But at the moment, similar to... You know, I hate comparing him to Cameron Jeffers because what Jeff did, completely different. And I know you're going to say, who's your mate? But it is. It is. There were no rules in place. There are rules in place. If that rule was in place, that would have never happened. This is Cameron. Rules were in place. He knew better. He knew what the rules were. And he went against the rules. And yeah, I think Reese did the right thing in terminating his contract with the team because you, you, can't have a, you, you can't allow that stuff to happen because if he can do it, then they can do it, then they can do it. And there's a long way for this sport to go before it gets legitimised the way we want it to be legitimised. But with things like this, hopefully it speeds that process up. It makes people realise that people do actually care about this sport. People do actually care about making sure that people aren't cheating by manipulating data. So, yeah, Canyon ZCC, a downer rider. Hopefully, Philip Digner will... will not let it get to him too much. We'll accept the, the punishment and move on and, and potentially come back a, a stronger rider than he ever has been and without having to, to manipulate his data. But yeah, there you go. Leave your comments down below on that one. What do you think to that story? That's a bit of a deep one, isn't it? The drama with Legion and Canyon ZCC and uh, Diagnet getting uh, flicked, for want of a better phrase. Leave your comments down below. All right, we'll wrap it up there. Just a short news show today. Got loads going on. Just about to record a podcast with any other guest and Cameron Jeffers. So that's going to be coming out this week. We've got the Wahoo LeCol Fuel by SIS Team Ride live stream on Thursday. That's going to be a mental one. Um, I'll fill you in as to why that will be on Thursday. And, uh, oh yeah, Tim's going to be streaming on here soon. So you're going to see some actual A-style a racing on this channel. Leave your comments down below, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you know when we go live with our videos. And if you've disliked the video for whatever reason, Reese, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, hit that dislike button. I don't care. See you on the next one, people.